all you divine men and women out there. My name is Lavria Ra and today I'd like to talk to you about aging. I'm a baby boomer and I just celebrated my 60th birthday. That's right. On April the 5th, the morning of my 60th birthday, I woke up, went to the mirror and said, holy shit I'm 60 years old. The good news is that I was able to shift by the end of the day into embracing a greater sense of self-empowerment, self-acceptance, creativity, a wisdom, and a wildness that I hadn't known before. And I have to tell you that 60 is amazing, amazing. It's nothing to fear. And I've never hid my age, I've never been embarrassed of it, and I'm not going to start now. But listen to this. I'm schmoozing with some of the mothers waiting to pick up my boys from school. Oh, by the way, I had twins at 50, and I'm not telling you this because I want to advise you or recommend that you should have twins at 50, but for me, it was the best thing I ever did. And isn't it great that women have options today? I mean, you don't even need a vagina to get pregnant. Of course, it helps to have one. So anyway, getting back, I'm schmoozing with some of the mothers, and I happened to mention that I'm going to be celebrating my 60th birthday, and they were like, <gasps> Would you believe those bitches tried to console me? Oh, you're, you still look good. I know. You're almost as old as my son's grandmother. No shit. Don't worry. I'm not. Because consolation is not something I welcome when I'm thinking celebration. And I want you to know, I give thanks to God every day for my life for the quality of my life, for the people in my life, and for the fact that if I take a suppository and stick it up my chocho, I can still be juicy anytime I want, people. That's right. You gotta roll with it. And I think that's the key. Yes, I do. Us baby boomers, we've lived through the turn of the century. We paved the way for you millennials. We've gone from analog to digital, aerosol, a roll-on. Some of us were in the closet, now we're out of the closet. And everything changed for us. And we're handling it with grace and dignity. Take language, for instance. What used to be inappropriate is now appropriate. So we've had to make the adjustment. Take the word pussy, one of my favorite words. That used to be a very vulgar word to say. My brother got slapped for saying pussy. Today, you hear it all the time, am I right? Mothers say to their daughters, Honey, don't forget to wash your pussy. Use soap. And I'll tell you something else about the pussy. Now that we're on the topic, did you know that you get gray hair down there? <laughs> That's right. I found that out from Whoopi Goldberg. So you can start now thinking about how you want to style it and what color you want to dye it. And I'll be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, at 60 years old, it's still good to know that I could turn a few heads. Not that I'm looking for it. I'm a happily married woman, dedicated to my man, and I would never cheat. But when I was walking on Forest Avenue last week doing my shopping, not one, but three guys tried to hit on me. That's right. Now, the quality of men that are checking me out these days is a little different than the quality of men from say 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. But male energy is male energy. Who gives a crap? This man, he hangs out in front of Citibank, was coming on to me like you wouldn't believe. He wanted to come home with me. And this guy, I met him at Produce in Key Food. <laughs> what a flirt. He was getting all excited. I made his day. And then I proceeded to go to the hardware store and I innocently asked, does anyone know where I could find a screw? And this guy came on to me like white on rice. 
So you see, ladies and gentlemen, us baby boomers, we still got it. And I grew up second generation Italian American. I love my Italian culture and I love meatballs and manicotti and the music and the passion. But you know that in that culture, there's a set of rules for men and a set of rules for women, even to this day. And I remember as a child, I wished I was a boy because they got to do all the cool things like go to the ball game, stay out late, go stock car racing. Until I was about 13 years old and that changed. And in my family, there were only two ways a woman could get respect. One, get married and have babies by the time you're 25. And two, get married and have babies by the time you're 25. You millennials, you didn't have to listen to that crap. <laughs> and there I was, single, 30 years old. It didn't matter that I had my own co-op. It didn't matter that I was investing my money. It didn't matter that I was traveling the world. It didn't matter that I was pursuing a graduate degree. It didn't matter that I was exploring my spirituality and my sexuality. What meaning could my life possibly have if I wasn't getting married and having babies? And I didn't want to get married. Oh no. Do you know why I didn't want to get married? I'll tell you why I would, didn't want to get married. I was scared shit. No one I knew was happily married. No one. Not my mother, my father, my best friends, my best friend's parents, the guy in the corner. No one, not a nothing. And half of those people that were unhappily married were miserably unhappily married. And the other half started getting divorced. What the? <laughs> no, there was no way. I'll stay happily single, thank you, for the rest of my life. And then, in my mid-30s, I have to confess, it started to get a little lonely. And I started observing people that were actually in love and building spiritual partnership. And that's something that I really wanted and I didn't have. And the void in my life was like this. And I remember, it was right before my 40th birthday, having a conversation with God. And I said, God, I am ready, willing, and open to receiving my soulmate and life partner. But it's up to you, dear God, to bring him to me. And if you think I'm going to settle for any schmo that you send me just because I'm about to be 40 and desperate, you got another guest coming, God, because I would rather be single for the rest of my life or live in a convent than be with some boy that doesn't love me passionately. That's right. That's what I told God. And then I surrendered it. And I knew I was going to be okay either way. And I was living in the question, will it happen or won't it happen? Then three months later, in walks Mr. Tall, Dark, and Handsome, and the rest is history. Now, why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because I want to encourage you that you are to never, 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 never give up on your dreams because you think you're too old or someone else thinks you're too old. Because there's a gift with every age. And every age is beautiful and so are you. I'm Loria Ra and I wish you joy. Shout